Hey guys, welcome back to another creepy video compilation. Make sure you like this video so we can get it recommended to others. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe so you can keep seeing videos just like this. Do you like going to the beach? Beach? This story is why I don't like sitting or laying on the sand without a mat. I'm Dr. Sam and this is a new series called New Fear Unlocked, where I talk about interesting medical cases and lessons you can learn so that the same thing does not happen to you. This is the story of 17-year-old Michael Dumas. He went to a Florida beach with his friends, was buried in the sand, and then he went home. That's when the nightmare started. That night, he started to complain of itch. They initially brushed it off as a ear infection, but the symptoms only became worse. He started to feel more lethargic, and he started to develop rashes. Several of these on his buttocks. As the days progressed, more and more of these rashes appeared on his legs. That was when they went to see their doctor, and he was diagnosed with cutaneous lava migrans, also known as hookworm. But this isn't your normal human hookworm. This hookworm is from dogs. Dogs that carry the hookworm transfers the worm to the yes. sand or the soil when they poop. And when you step on contaminated soil, the worm goes into your skin. But because this is a dog hookworm and we are not suitable hosts, the worm will not migrate to our intestines, but instead stays in the skin for a buffet. This is the track that the worm makes. And usually at the end of the track is where you find the worm. And because Michael completely submerged himself in the sand, you can only imagine how many parts of his body were affected. So next time, just be careful of where you step, sit, or lay. Don't worry, he made full recovery with some anti-parasitic medication. But at least now, you know. I'll be damned. That is new fear unlocked. I will remember my towel next time. I had no idea. Better hurry up. Don't get public shamed. There it is. Look at this guy. Oof, got him. Oh, oh, got her, dude. Oh, no. Oh. So, just so you guys know, do not jaywalk in China. You will be shamed. That is crazy. They catch you jaywalking, your social credit score drops, you get kicked out of your apartment. Welcome to the future, baby. I don't know if I should feel bad for that guy or the snake. That looked exactly like that scene from Jurassic Park. That was actually funny. Do not watch this video at night. This will freak you out. In the photo behind me is a man named Cody. And while he was home by himself, he was starting to experience some very odd things. He was hearing noises and it was pretty clear that he thought someone was in the house. And by the way, the footage that I'm about to show you was recorded by him. When he walked over to the bathroom, the lights were flickering. But not only were the lights flickering, but the faucet was on, so he turned the faucet off and left. At this point, Cody got pretty freaked out, so he went outside and called his wife and let her know what was happening. His wife insisted that he would stay outside, however, Cody decided to go back in and do some more filming. When he went back inside, the entire kitchen was a complete mess. Cupboards were open and things were thrown around as seen in this photo. And this right here is the clip of him first walking in. When Cody watched this clip back, he saw something absolutely terrifying in one of the frames. This is the still frame. Can you see it? This is what he saw looking out from the corner no. of his daughter's bedroom door. If I were Cody, I'd be selling my house and moving out immediately. I would take a loss at that point personally, so you better put that house up on Zillow immediately. <laughs> That individual with human remains wrapped around his head and the ashes of a deceased person smeared all over his face and body is an Aghori, a small but rather extreme sect of Hinduism that challenges societal norms. They are devout followers of the god Shiva and believe that everything in this world is ultimately perfect. There is no good or bad. 
and so they take part in a variety of rituals designed to directly oppose the ideals of purity in major sects of Hinduism. The Aguri rituals include acts of cannibalism where they consume human remains, meditating while sitting on dead corpses, uh, and consuming a whole lot of cannabis. Some believe that the Aguri can see the future, while others believe that they can curse you. And there are some that believe that the Aguri have their own form of dark magic. That guy looked terrifying, man. He looks like the boss at the end of a level. <laughs> What was the purpose of St. George's Keep? The secret Sons of Man dungeon holding monsters and demons. Take a quick look through the subterranean cells. At the myriad imprisoned horrors once held within the impregnable fortress that set atop hallowed ground for multiple decades. According to my ancestors' writings, this was a place of deep study and research. That the old stone walls held almost every supernatural creature capable of being captured, in hopes of learning how best to combat them. It also stated here that it was my forefather, the paladin Reinhold Oldry, who captured many of these specimens. That it was his son, Harold Oldry, that collected the photographs into an album. And grandson, Harold Jr., who entrusted them to the vampire Alexandra for safekeeping. It seems that she spent a time as a prisoner of the Keep herself. She's allowed me to show her photos, claiming to look far different now. And it was she who passed the album along to me, claiming it to be my birthright. That sounds like a movie I would totally watch. Somebody should make that. I, I, I think you're telling us that you don't disagree with the 85,000 number of, of children that we, we lost contact with. I'm not saying you lost them, so we lost contact with them. We don't know where those kids are. Is that fair to say? We attempt to make a safety and well-being... I understand that. Let's, let's get to the point here. Let's just answer the direct question. When you made the call, you didn't get a response. Your letter tells me that you usually make three calls. You got no response on any of those three calls in 85,000 kids. Is that right? Um, in... 81% of the, the calls, we are... You lost 80, you, didn't, you didn't have contact with more than 85,000 kids. Is that fair to say? Is that fair, fair? I mean, just yes or no. It, 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 we're not saying, oh, what's your percentage? 85,000 children that were placed by you. You made calls to check on them, and you made three calls on average. 85,000 of them. That's... that's you have no idea where they are. You don't want to answer the question. That's fine. We're going to go on. You can see in her face. She knows exactly where those kids are. That is repulsive, man. Yo, that shark was just checking him. <laughs> he just bopped them. I would have turned that water brown. Yeah, but inside this three-star motel. This what really freaked me out up here by the front door. Not this. See the latch is broke. This what freaked me out. Right by the front door. That's wild, bro. That's creepy up shit. Nah, it's 
supposed to be the safe. Dang, bro, you gotta ask for a new room. I would not be sleeping in there that night. I gotta be checking all the closets now every time I stay at a hotel. After seeing a grizzly bear heading directly towards him while hiking, this man climbed a tree in order to escape the bear. As his friends filmed from another tree, the bear begins to claw at the hiker's boots, attempting to get him down from the tree. Climbing higher in the tree in fear, the man fails to realize that bears can also climb trees, and that's exactly what the grizzly does next. Terrified as the bear gets closer to him, at the last second, the bear jumps down and leaves, letting the man live to see another day. I think that bear was just trying to play tag. He probably wasn't hungry. Stumbled across a creepy hole that was covered up in the middle of the desert in an unknown location. So he decided to uncover it and have a look what's down the dark hole. After enhancing the brightness, we can see what potentially looks like many pairs of glowing eyes lurking at the bottom of the dark hole. Those sounded like cats. I know there's desert cats and stuff, but I mean, how would they have gotten down there? That's a weird one. This is why you always put a towel on the handle in your hotel before you sleep. But I'm curious, what would you do in this situation? What is going on at hotels, dude? He can't even get a room without getting kidnapped anymore? Why is the CIA trying to hide the end of the world? In 2013, the CIA declassified 50 pages from a 1966 book called The Adam and Eve Story, and the world went crazy. Well, you see, a former U.S. defense contractor named Dr. Chan Thomas wrote in the book that every 12 to 14,000 years, the magnetic pulse of the Earth will shift, causing major cataclysms that are meant to reset human civilization. Interestingly enough, the book goes on to say that we are actually the sixth advanced civilization to evolve on Earth, and eerily, the cataclysm is about to happen again. Well, if you look at the evidence, there have been many instances or artifacts found that predate our 12,000-year history. Even though we can only speculate as to why the other 232 pages are still classified, many people are wondering if what is written is true. But maybe the question we should be asking is... That one stresses me out, man. This is the one that I'm hoping is bullcrap. Adrenaline junkie much? That was completely insane. <laughs> 
Did you hear the news? Perhaps you're referring to the fact that the Department of Homeland Security has allegedly lost 85,000 refugee children. And of course, we can't forget about the parking garage, which collapsed in Manhattan today, leaving one dead. Oh, 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 don't let me forget the shooting spree in Maine today, which left four dead and three others injured. And don't let me forget about the explosion at an ethanol plant in Wood River, New England today, which left one dead and dozens of questions. Bro, I was gonna say, uh, Ice Spice had her Instagram account removed because her name is Isis, but uh, that seems highly irrelevant now. Here's the funny thing. It's not irrelevant. Censorship will be the death of us. I'm with you, bro, but you gotta take a chill pill. You're yelling at me. god dude it caught on fire from the friction if it's on the internet maybe that means he lived right a tiktok account by the name of el domador de sumisas captures something really strange on top of a mountain in mexico what well, looks like a giant humanoid being moving on top of a mountain this thing has to be at least two to three meters tall if you take a look at the mountain and the trucks passing by as a reference for size he captured two videos i'm going to show you guys this is the first video <laughs> When this video was uploaded, internet users were baffled, but at the same time they weren't much convinced about it because it's not moving much. But then, El Domodor de Sumisas uploaded another video, a complete video, and in this second video you can see the creature crouching, walking just like any human being would. The only difference is this thing is huge, it has to be around 2-3 to three meters tall if you pay attention to the trucks, cars and the mountain as a reference for size. This is the video, pay very much attention, whatever this is going on here, it's, it's, I don't know, what the heck, take a look at this. Yo vi un gigante ahí arriba. ¿Qué será? Se mueve, se mueve. Pay close attention, it's gonna start walking now. What the heck is going on here? Didn't the last guy that posted a video like this disappear too? Does anybody in the comments know what happened to that guy? Whoever posted this better watch out. They'll be knocking at his door next. Ah, 
You could see the exact moment the panic starts to set in. He was so happy when that latch opened. Somebody give this man a stuntman job. That was awesome. So you remember Art, right? Yeah. Basically, this story is called The Hole to Hell. So it starts off with this guy. His name is Mel Waters. He has land in Washington, right? His land is pretty big, bro. Like, in terrenos type shit, right? And on his property, bro, he ends up finding a hole. And a bunch of locals throw a bunch of shit in there. Old, like, technology, refrigerators, shit that doesn't work, garbage, dead animals, whatever. He tried to find out how deep it was, right? Okay. So what he did was he took a fishing line and he took a weight. He threw the weight down with the fishing line. And he said that it didn't even touch the floor. And guess how deep he reached, though? He reached 80,000 feet without touching the floor. How long was the f the fish? That's how much string he bought, though. He bought mad string like boom boom 80,000 feet is long bro that's big hey yo as usual i brought the dogs with me they wouldn't go anywhere near the damn thing and if i try to bring them there on a leash they'll just dig their feet and they do not want to go anywhere near the hole but the thing is that makes this whole shit even weirder bro after the radio station aired and shit mel waters didn't live there anymore what, what do you mean people are saying that the government he said it himself as well because he called again he's saying that basically people the government approached them they offered it him an X amount of money to stop talking about what he was talking about and to move and that they were going to buy the land and they were going to occupy the land now. And did they do that? They did that because in 2012, some guy named Gerald Osborne, who's like a local of the town, he ended up trying to find the hole because he was trying to figure out what the going on yeah so that he couldn't go anywhere near it bro like that shit was blocked off and it was a military should have strapped a gopro to that fishing line bro could have found some stuff out i got no buzz aldrin really well he went down to antarctica all these one percenters were going down there it's like a new disney world i had to look at buzz and ask him buzz what happened down there buzz did say one thing it just stuck in my head it's the way he said it we thought out things we shouldn't buzz saw something and i don't know what it was but it was yeah, it was enough to give the man a heart attack. But the thing about Buzz Aldrin, there was this very cryptic tweet that came out during his stay down there. He said, we have seen the faces of evil and we're all in danger. And this is right before he had his heart attack. And that's probably why they don't want us going up there. I bet there's some creepy stuff that they've thought out. He sneaks into the most dangerous places on earth and that backfired when he decided to visit the Taliban. He first traveled to Afghanistan shortly before the Taliban takeover. He had to be airlifted out of the country during the fall of Kabul, taking a highly sought after seat on an evacuation flight where thousands of others were left behind. He later returned where he joined a Taliban parade. He bought weapons from them, earned their trust, and even called them his Talibros. When he returned home, he bragged online about how easy it was to fool the Taliban and even published a book about it. He went back to visit a third time, and he disappeared. European diplomats confirmed Lord Miles was captured by the Taliban. A few days later, he posted some photos online saying everything was good, but to please excuse his lack of communication. And to this day, no one has heard from him since. I heard of this guy. He was just tempting fate, man. He escaped originally and then decided to go back twice. And now he's missing. Like, just why? I don't even think an exterminator can help you at that point, man. <laughs> I've seen this video before. They look like aliens, but they're just baby elves. My story tonight comes to us from some goaded sources. First and foremost being David Politis. Yay! Let's go. Why do we all know that name? Why do we react that way? Because David Politis is the godfather of missing 411. People all around the country, all around the world disappearing under mysterious circumstances. And only cases that do not have a good explanation get put into this. There's a specific criteria by which they become missing 411 cases. Yeah. So these cases, we've covered a lot of them in the past. Go through our past episodes and look at them. Here's some that I don't remember us covering. 
Uh, I also, what spurred me to look back into this was a Windagoon video that got posted. Great YouTube channel, go check him out. And another YouTube channel called Moonlit Ghost, where he does something similar, covers weird fringe things on hmm. YouTube. So go check those out. And uh, of course, Reddit, Wikipedia. This one is of Eric Lewis. What I would imagine a decently experienced outdoorsman. Why? Because they were ice climbing near Mount Rainier. He rappels down on the side of a mountain on some ice. They can hear him moving. They can hear him climbing. He goes further. They're up, uh, securing everything, just watching. After a while, it's quiet. And they yell down, Eric! nothing. They jingle the line, and to their horror, they realize the line is loose. They quickly pull it up, and at the end of the line is supposed to be Eric, but nothing's there. An empty carabiner is at oh, the end of the line. no, dude. So they imagine, holy shit, somehow he unhooked himself and it has fallen. Yeah, because it's not even like a like a broken line. It's like the carabiners. Like, holy shit. Yes. And as you know, as a climber, every time you start climbing, you check every connection. You yep. count it off. You both confirm. You lock then you it. go. You lock into one before you unlock another. There you go. Perplexed, terrified, they look for him. His body is never found. Even where he would have fallen. It's not there. That's but why. what they do find halfway down the mountain in a small ice cave is his backpack and some of his gear. What the? But nothing else. Like, mm -hmm. you cannot just all of a sudden, like, disappear from this spot unless you're, like, carried away by a f***ing eagle or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just disappears. Wild. Next person. Yeah, the 411 are super creepy, man. I always tell people where I'm going to be beforehand. You never know, bro. <laughs> Oh my god, that must have been Bambi's evil twin. Hey, what are you reporting? Uh, I got a strain going on out here. Something just killed my dog. Something killed your dog? My dog went flying through the air over the trees. I don't know how it did it. That was a real 911 call made from Kitsap, Washington in the year 1990. In which a man claimed that someone or something grabbed his dog and threw it over his nine foot privacy fence, ultimately killing it. And the next time that he would call 911 would be far, far worse. The area known as Kitsap has been known to have all kinds of weird and odd sightings of something out there ever since people have occupied the land. This being is often what we refer to as Sasquatch. Now in the phone call he describes that there's something outside crawling around. He brings up the fact that his dog recently passed away and begs the police to send someone out there. All this is to build up to the moment that he actually realizes what he's looking at. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I believe or don't believe this phone call. That is up to you to decide. Here's the call. Uh, here comes through the window. No, no, I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. Jesus Christ, you better... Yeah, see ya! Hello? Get somebody out there. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine. I don't know. You see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. Dude, he said he was looking at him. Is that guy dead? Does anybody know? We got a lot of strange stuff in the news this week, Bushkis. NASA and the US government have said that multiple interstellar objects have entered our solar system. Then, NASA's been discussing all the strange unidentified flying objects that have been around lately before their last report comes out. It turns out that the billionaire tech CEOs are afraid AI will come after them once they've taken over. Yesterday there was another earthquake in Reno. This is the second one I felt in a month. Not to mention, it's rained here in Reno eight of the last ten days. And I can tell you, I've lived here 30 years, and this was the wettest winter that we've had since I've been here. Climate change or something else? And finally, scientists say that a quasi-moon, whatever that is, has been orbiting the Earth since 100 BC. Could this be what people are seeing when they're seeing two suns in the sky? Or is it planet Nibiru? Whenever strange, weird stories like these come out, or when it just decides to rain in the desert for a few months, it always makes me think, is this part of an agenda that we don't know about? I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Shabadoo, Vushkis! They got that uh, harp machine going f 
full blast right now. It's been raining here hard lately too. I can't say I'm mad though, cause I, I work outside, so. There might be more than seven continents on Earth. Okay, so the Earth might be bigger than we thought. For many years, people have debated over the shape of the Earth, if it is round or flat. Now this might be all conspiracy, but what if the Earth had more than seven continents, and Antarctica was just a giant ice wall that kept us from seeing the rest of the continents? What if, once you made it past the ice all, you'll find the 20 continents that are really being hidden from us? And what if there was a map that showed this? There are theories that these continents contain prehistoric animals, aliens, and advanced civilizations. And the seven continents that we are living in are just a big farm for business, owned by a small handful of families that make up the filthy rich and the other continents that we don't know about. So what if- That would be like, the entire world that we know is basically the Truman Show. Hey, let's go! Oh! <laughs> the fact that you can't see it till it's too late, that is terrifying. Everybody thinks this video is fake until they see what's in the vent. In 2018, a group of urban explorers decided to check out this abandoned factory. As soon as they go inside, they see this warning on the wall. They go upstairs anyways and immediately hear voices from the floor above them. Instead of running away like normal people, they go up to have a look. They trace the voices back to this vent, so they think, and they take their camera and they slide it in to have a look. When they review the footage, they can't believe what they found. Mr. Ballin, how dare you? That was uncalled for, bro. They're like tiny little demons trying to suck your blood. Dang, man, that poor truck driver. That car came out of nowhere. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's like the fifth video of a bear opening a door I've seen. Lock your doors, guys. In 1955, this man was attacked by a rabid wolf. The medical team at the Pasteur Institute in Iran filmed the progression of his disease. This man developed symptoms of rabies. He displays a characteristic restlessness and agitation. As a precaution against the convulsions which commonly occur in rabies, the patient is secured hand and foot. The most familiar clinical symptom of rabies is associated with difficulty in swallowing. When fluid comes in contact with the throat, it is violently expelled, at the same time producing painful, spasmodic muscular contractions. The medical team could do nothing but document this man's rabies. Within five days, he was dead. The problem with rabies is that unlike most diseases which Mother Nature is merciful in which you lapse into coma or obtunded, with rabies, as you're dying, you are intermittently fully coherent and you can fully express verbally to your family how scared you are, how awful it is, and how you know you're going to die. So for that reason, it's really, really feared. Damn, man, that's got to be a rough way to go. I always wondered how humans would react if they didn't get the shot. If you think about it, rabies is like a zombie virus, but for animals, because they just want to bite you. Whoa.
How'd that get in there? I guess you're not going to work today, huh? That is a good way to die, man. Probably won't be doing that again. And it's even more bizarre than that because when you then try to understand these pictures, you find out that buried in them are computer codes just like the type that you find in a browser when you go surf the web. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Wait, you're blowing my mind at this moment. So you're saying, are you saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. So the wait, wait, I'm still, wait, I have to just be silent for a minute here. <laughs> so you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory and in general in systems that we can say are supersymmetric. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Time to go home, I think. I mean, I, where are we gonna go? So, so are you saying we're all just, there's some entity that programmed the universe and we're just expressions of their code well, I didn't say that. I mean, some of those like the matrix? You, that's of, what you said. Some of those codes are, are showing on the screen behind you right now. They don't look like codes, but these pictures, which we call adinkras, are graphical representations of sets of equations that are based on codes. So this is, in fact, to answer your question more directly, I have, in my life, come to a very strange place because I never expected that the movie The Matrix might be an accurate representation. We definitely live in a GTA lobby, that's for sure. Well, that was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Every single one of you is awesome, and I appreciate all of you guys. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.